past tense. Done. Not to be repeated. That's why you can't re-crucify him again and again and again. Like you're being taught, you can trample the blood. And your heart should never made pure by faith, working by love. So anybody that tells you that Christians have treacherous hearts, or they're desperately wicked, or all their righteousness is filthy rags, and Paul's the chief of sinners, and a wretched man, and all the rest of this, all lies. They're liars with no truth in them. They're not your brothers and sisters. They're not slightly in error. They are fundamentally in error of the basic tenets of redemption. Redemption itself meaning released from bondage. Released from what bondage? Just like these clowns that go around telling you, well, repentance is nowhere in the Bible tells repentance is turning from sin. Well, if you repent, and if that means change in mind or change in directions, as they always say, what are, you, what are you changing from? What are you turning from? What did the people of Nineveh turn from if they didn't turn from sin? Yet I've heard you people listening to preachers on your blogs and channels. You got them. You said, I like this guy. And I go and I listen to the guy, and he's saying about Nineveh, well, the people didn't turn from sin. Where it says exactly that, that they turned from the wickedness of their doings and then pleaded with God that he would relent in the judgment that he had pronounced upon them. So they're liars with no truth in them. And you, posting, liking their videos, may be a partaker of their sin. I'm not your final judge by no means, but you've got to get these things right unless you're led into the error of the wicked and led astray into this filthy rags nonsense while you think you're preaching holiness. Just like the, all the old holiness preachers that preach the second act of grace or entire sanctification, they thought they were preaching holiness. In righteousness, turned to God. But yet they were teaching that people got saved first in their sins, was still wretched, still had that moral depravity in them that had to be washed away, so they were still carnal, sold under sin, so to speak, in Romans 7.14. But yet, that's supposed to happen in repentance. That's supposed to be done away, laid aside, amended. That's what repentance is for. In the reconciliation, to be returned to favor at the mercy seat, when the when the blood of Christ then can wash away your past sins, like it says, how much more should the blood of Christ, through the eternal Spirit, purge your conscience of dead works, so you can be cleansed for present service, a vessel fit for the master's use, not a vessel of filthy rags, wretched man, treacherous heart. So anybody you hear telling you you got believers have a treacherous heart. A desperately wicked heart. All their righteousness is filthy rags. And Paul was the chief of sinners. And you're the Romans wretch. And all the rest of that. They're liars with no truth in them. They're not your brothers and sisters. They're a person you should have no fellowship with. It says, therefore, be not partakers with them. These fornicators on clean, covetous people. They're filthy. Filthy-minded. Filthy gestures. Filthy characteristics. Be not partakers with them. But these people that are twisting the truth just a little bit, leading you into the error of the wicked, are even more dangerous than the ones that are outright just in these sins, saying they're forgiven in Christ. Anybody that tells you repentance is a gift, I hear that all the time. I hear it on the, I see it on their statements of faith and their sites. Repentance is not a gift; it's a command. Even in you go into the Greek lexicon and you click on. Repentance in the tense that it's given in the aorist present tense, perfect tense, it's a command imperative to be obeyed when it's presented. It's not an invitation. It's not a gift. But yet, because it says he granted the Gentiles repentance unto life, you think that's some magic word in the scriptures. That granted, he means he has to give you a special dispensation, like he has to draw you or you can't even come unless he draws you. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me, he says. Same thing with repentance. He Gave them an opportunity to repent. That's all that means. Use your brain and you won't be deceived. Get out of your emotions. Quit reacting from emotional things and logically search through these scriptures. Be like the Bereans who search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Reason together with God. That means a reasonable, understanding, logical 
progression through the scriptures of connecting things together, then you won't be deceived. Anybody who tells you it's impossible to stop sinning without Jesus, again, people stop sinning all the time without Jesus. People that have no knowledge of God whatsoever live better than 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 in Ephesians 5, the verses I just read. I see them all the time. They're not fornicators and drunkards and covetous and thieves and liars, but yet that's your average professed Christian. You can't trust them. They're filthy people. They're people not to be trusted. As we've said in the past before, you can just go to these websites where you see all this abuse going on and you understand, if you're a thinking person, that your kids are safer in the notatoriums, in the gymnasiums that are guarded from pedophilia and all this kind of stuff, then the average church where it's no big deal. And you got people teaching Sunday class, school classes and with the kids that are pedophiles, addicted to pornography and all the rest of it. The children aren't safe there because they teach this horrible doctrine. And they're not of God. You don't go to these churches that are condoning these things. And my God, go to a church that's actually performing same-sex marriage? God forbid, Paul would say. But yet that's occurring right now even in my own community and probably yours. These things need to be struck down. We need to make hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of videos join our ranks together and get rid of all this faith alone, no one's righteous, filthy rags nonsense and discern what is true and pull down these strongholds. I mean, what we're doing is like a drop in the bucket compared to what's going on out there 24-7. So the not, nobody's perfect, judge not, it's not a works, doesn't matter what you do. I, if I say I have no sin, lies. They are the liars. It's the people that tell you that you, faithfulness unto God, that repentance means to stop sinning that you come out of your sins in that process of repentance. That righteousness is what you do and not what you receive. That you don't trust, you do. What must I do to be saved? It's not what's been done to be saved. That righteousness is what you do and not what you receive. Sin's what you do and not what you are. That the flesh is just the flesh. It's the lustful desires and passions given over to self-indulgence that need to be crucified. You don't drive nails through your hands and feet, do you? Or lash yourself like a bunch of monks. No, you crucify your passions and desires. Well, if you're taught that you can't even change your own desires and God's got to change them for you, how are you going to crucify them? You're not. You see? You've been led to the error of the wicked. Down the road to perdition. So the selfish desires have to change in the process of repentance. Just like 2 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11 talk about in James 21 in James 4, 7 through 10. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Then you can receive with meekness that engrafted word can take root in the heart that's been prepared. Preparation of the heart belongs to man. And then produce an increase. Otherwise it's going to be choked out among the thorns of all these lies. Among the thorns of all these, these sinful desires that you haven't been put, you haven't crucified. Be choked out. It's going to spring up maybe for a while. You believe for a while and then it just withers away. Because it wasn't deeply rooted in a heart that was honest with God, prepared to receive the word. So hearts made pure by obedience to the truth, through faith working by love, having victory over sin, the flesh, and the devil. And the old man was crucified with Christ, not ongoing, not, not completely the rest of your life. Christians serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. The wretched man in desperately wicked heart and filthy rags been put to death in repentance. Christians are worthy. Look at all these verses I found. You could do a whole video about worthiness, about be counted worthy to suffer, uh, walk worthy of him, uh, be counted worthy of the kingdom, be worthy of your high calling. Jesus said in Revelation 3, 4, when he talked about the church of Sardis, they are worthy because they have not defiled their garments. They are worthy to enter the kingdom. See, worthiness, righteousness is a bad word to these people that teach these lies. They think when you're talking about self-righteousness. They think it's self-righteousness to, be, to stop being filthy and an adulterer and fornicator and a porn watcher and all. They, they think that's self-righteousness and being perfect is God. That's how far this lie has gone. Well, you're as perfect as God. You don't need Jesus. I say you didn't need Jesus. Jesus, Spirit of God, is there at every step of the way to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment, 
to assist you through that process of repentance. If you have a humble and obedient heart. If you have a heart that's honest and prepared to receive and be reconciled unto God. That's what he's looking for. If you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. The scriptures talk about. So don't tell me you come to him as a vile sinner and then he taps you on the head and sends you away. Everything's okay, like these people are doing in the churches and some of the street preachers. Those are liars with no truth in them. They're not my brothers and sisters. They're teaching lies that will put people into perdition. Is that clear enough? I hope it is. We've been over this a thousand times. So the people that tell you those things are liars with no truth. They teach the inverse of truth, the doctrine of moral depravity, the sin nature, the faith alone, the salvation and trusting in the blood, receiving the finished work, the penal substitution that he did it all for you, the different models of the atonement that make provision and make repentance kind of an afterthought. In other words, it's not mandatory to come clean because man's inability to stop sinning and produce deeds worthy of repentance because he's got this inbred nature in him. It's all inverse of the truth. You either come into him as an ongoing sin-confessed lifestyle of failure or make excuses for returning to the pig pen in some sort of second cleansing that's supposed to take place and the old man dies out over time while you keep going back to the pig pen. Well, as I've said a hundred times before, the prodigal come out of the pig pen, he never went back. Okay, he rose up, he came to himself, meaning he has the ability and the free will choice to, the, to come out of that pig pen, realize his life is in shambles, and go to the Father and beg for mercy. And that's what you do at the mercy seat for reconciliation. Reconciliation just simply means a return to favor. And you have yet to be reconciled until you come through repentance. That's what the scriptures teach.